assignment to create the best airport valet parking service in the world. How about closest to the airport? Security cameras. Discount programs. Parking exactly two feet apart. Car maintenance service. And the friendly staff. Very impressive. What do you think? Ankari Express Valet already does every one of those. That's right, Mr. Jones. All of you, you're fired. Trust your car to Ron Kari at Bradley International Airport. The best in airport parking. I hate copycats. Hey, Steve Parker back behind the scenes again. You know, here in the beautiful Dodge Theater in Hartford, you see some of the most spectacular acts that play anywhere in the world. They play right here in Hartford. It's not that often that you see it this quiet. But in just a very short while, it's going to be filled with people applauding and screaming and watching some great acts. Wouldn't you like to be there? Not just be here, but be here. You know, the seats I'm talking about, right? Maybe uh, you'd like to bring your employees out for a night on the town. Maybe you've got some special clients that you want to, you know, show them just how much their business means to you. You'd like to make them feel important, wouldn't you? Because they're your VIPs. They're important to your business, right? Keeping your employees happy, keep your clients happy. And what better way to do it than with some great entertainment here in Hartford at the Dodge, or actually you can go right down the street to the Chevrolet in Wallingford. More great acts all over Connecticut. You know, the reason these great acts come to Connecticut to play is because the Connecticut audiences are always spectacular. And we have a special friend who knows how to bring those acts to us. His name's Jimmy Koplick. Jimmy started bringing acts here in Connecticut back in the early 1970s. That's when I first met him. He's quite a man. He's committed to giving you an experience you will always cherish. Come on along and meet Jim Koplick. Jimmy, you and I met back in uh, probably in the early 70s when you were first doing uh, Dillon Stadium. And uh, I had the opportunity to work with you back there. I think it was... 25 bucks and a t-shirt and you had to get there at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, right? Yeah, I paid you $25. I was yeah. very proud of that. I'm still working on getting people for $25. It's much harder <laughs> these days to do. But you were only about 13 or 14 years old. Uh, no, I, yeah, well, I was a kid. Something yeah. like mm -hmm. that. And I think, if I remember correctly, you handled... We didn't even put you out in front. We kept you backstage because yep. you were a little guy yep. and we were afraid you were going to get hurt. Yep. So we kept you backstage and paid you what I consider charity money to sit in front of a, 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 some sort of dress room that nobody was going to sneak into. <laughs> anyway, but that's all right. But that's all right. But we did start back in the early 70s together. And we've actually been, remained close friends for almost 35 years Long now, time, which boy. is great. Uh, and uh, I started promoting concerts actually in Columbus, Ohio in 1968 came to Connecticut in 1971. First show was at the New Haven Arena in 1972 with the band Traffic and have been lucky enough to do most of the major concerts in the state of Connecticut since 1972, whether it's been at the Hartford Civic Center in the New Haven Coliseum, which were really my original homes. Yeah. Uh, and then I built the, uh, the Meadows, which is now the Dodge Music Center in 95, and that became my home along with the Hartford Civic Center. And then they knocked down the Coliseum, but then I came over to the Chevrolet Theater about 1998, and that became my home. And then in 2001, Mohegan Sun Arena opened up their arena, and that became one of my homes. So I have a lot of homes that I have right now. I hear laughing in some other room, and it makes me feel locked out. You say my passion often stifles you, and you need to move about.
a result of my background um, and love for art, I was someone who was um, interested in motion pictures and video. So it became a profession. Someone once told me, don't ever make a hobby become your profession because then you won't like it anymore. But in fact, I do. Every day, I go to work excited about the creative challenges I have.